533. Now these ones are kind of, this is an interesting case, but I, I think you'll like this one. <laughs> maybe, maybe, maybe it's for you. Okay, so um, I would do a rewrite. I would make that x times uh, x minus 1 to the 1 half. Okay. And what seems to be stuck, x minus 1. Oh, yes, thank you. Thank you, thank you. Um, so it seems to be, have an x minus 1 is uh, our problem. And so uh, du is dx, because it's just 1 times dx. So here's where the problem occurs. Watch what happens. This comes out. That is the perfect, great, wonderful. This comes out. That becomes u. Have we substituted all of the x's in the problem? Still got one. But let's think of algebraically what we know. Let's take this one right here. Would you agree, since u equals x minus 1, that x equals u plus 1? So don't we know that this is u plus 1? So we do know what x is. x is u plus 1. Okay. Now, once we put that in there, watch what happens. It will become an integrable sort of thing, if that makes sense. <laughs> Watch. We're going to have u plus 1, just put it in parentheses. We're going to have u to the negative 1 half, and then we're going to have the u. Now, let's go back, let's go backwards in our lives to a few months ago when we were doing derivatives. Would we make that a product rule? No. What would we do? We distribute. Yeah. We would distribute. We would multiply it through. In that factored state, it's not super helpful for doing a derivative. So would it be helpful for doing an antiderivative? Not in the least. So why not do the tricks we know to make things nicer? So when we get to that point, we're going to have uh, this is u to the first times u to the negative one half is u to the one half. And then this is going to be u to the negative one half to u. Now we know how to undo um, power rules, right? To undo a power rule, we just add one to the power and uh, divide by the new power. Okay. So this power is going to be three halves to, to divide by it, make it two thirds. This is going to be one half to divide by it, multiply by two, and then don't forget your plus. And so now we know what u is equal to. It's equal to the quantity of x minus 1. So let's plug it back in. So this is kind of a, a very kind of unique one. So what we had to do is kind of think a little more globally what x was. And we had to rearrange and do a little solving for this extra x here. Because technically the derivative of this is 1, and so there was no x to substitute in. And that, do, that usually happens when these two are a um, perfect match of one another. That might happen. So that's kind of a unique uh, uh, problem. It doesn't happen too often, but usually it's going to happen when this power matches this power. Um, that is a technique that you can use. So there is 532.
these techniques are really the most difficult algebraic link that we have seen so far because we have to kind of, you know, think about what was the hardest derivatives we did, chain rules. So what is going to be the most difficult type of integration we're going to do? The opposite of a chain rule, U substitution. Let's look at this. Now, for the first time, we have bounds. But the integral is just going to be upper bound minus lower bound, just like before. You don't have to write that plus C when you have that upper bound, because you would add C and subtract C, so it doesn't do anything. Okay. So do use substitution. I'm going to show you two ways to do this problem. One way we can substitute the bounds. Well, I'll show you. Okay. So let's just pretend we, we, we're just going to do this problem like we've done so far. So the U seems to be this thing right here. It's stuck inside of a fifth power. Its power is three. If I took its derivative, the uh, derivative seems to be living on the outside. So my derivative of that is, or, well, let's write it down first. One plus two x cubed. The derivative of that is six x squared dx. Now let's go back to our problem for a minute. We only have an x squared dx left in the problem, so this side only needs to have an x squared dx. So we got to move the 6. The 6 is an extra piece that we have to get rid of. So that's 1 6 du is x squared dx. Now it's a perfect match. Now it is what's left in the problem. So that's how you get rid of a constant that, that it has gone away. So we are going to put the u in. So the 1 6 du I usually put constant on the outside, du on the inside back, and then we're going to get u to the fifth. Now, we know how to do that. Now, these are axes still, so we can't do anything. We can't just undo it and stick 0 and 5 in, or 0 and 1 in. Those are axes, not u's. So there's a few different things we can do. Okay. So, uh, uh, we're going to get u to the 6th divided by 6. would we'll take the 6 that's already there and make it a 36. Are you getting the, um, power goes up yep. by 1, divide by the new power. As soon as I asked the question, I was <laughs> that, This is x's, so we're not ready to um, uh, plug in. So I'm going to do it over here to the side because I want to show you a way we can fix that. Okay, so um, uh, if we put the x's back in, that's 1 plus 2x cubed to the 6th power over 36. And now we can put 0 and 1 in because they're x's. Okay. So if we put 1 in, we get 3 to the 6th over 36 minus, if we put 0 in, we get 1 over 36. So what the heck is 3 to the 6th power? Oh, that would be 9 times 9 times 9. I don't know. Uh, 729. So this is 729 over 36. Minus 1 over 36 is 728. Um, yeah, yeah, at least it reduces by two. Let's see if it reduces any more than that. So I can tell you. Um, yeah, I think they're both divisible by four. So you get if you divide by four, one eighty-two over. Okay. Now I'm going to go back to this step right here and tell you an alternative. Don't we know? Would you agree? that u is 1 plus 2x cubed. Do you agree that that's the case? So if x is 1, would you agree that that would make, when x is 1, then u would be 1 plus 2 or 3, right? When x is 0, would you agree? Uh-huh, because it, it takes care of it for you. 
um, if you put in zero, would you agree that u is equal to one? So if we change our boundaries to be u's, it takes care of it for us. And look at over here. That became a three. That became a one. So it happens either way. So that's 3 to 6 over 36 minus 1 over 36, which is 182 over 9. You get the same answer both ways. So if you change the boundaries, then make them use and then plug in, or keep them X's and plug in anyway, you're going to get the same answer both directions. But I wanted you to see you can change your boundaries because you can make them use. Or you can put the x's in and then plug in the boundaries that were already given to the x's. Sometimes changing them to use is it feels easier. It's not. If you're doing the same thing, but you can do that. If you know. Any questions about that one? Are we good with 534? Okay. E, gotta love that. Now, what did we learn about e to a function? Let's talk about its <coughs> derivative. Because we, you know, we did those very, you know, kind of one section. And if we took the derivative of an e with a function in its power, uh, the derivative you leave the power alone. We multiply by the derivative of the power. So the thing that stuck in an exponential is the power. And look at our power. Is its derivative or a multiple of its derivative living in the problem? The derivative that is 8x, we got an x, yeah, we're good. So in this case, your u is going to be 4x squared plus 3. Because a multiple of it is living in our problem. So du is going to be 8x dx. Now, I don't see 8x, I see x and dx. So I need this side to only contain the x and the dx. So when that happens, divide that, uh, that factor to the other side. Okay. So we're going to make that 1 8 du equals x dx. Now it's a perfect match. Okay, so now we have everything ready to go. So the x dx becomes 1 8. Are, um, we're going to get e to the u, du. Now, I put the little x equals 1 and x equals 0 to remind us that our boundaries are x's, not u's. And we can fix that if we want. So this is going to be the derivative of e to the u is e to the u. And so that's going to be 1 8 e to the u. Now, let's fix our boundaries. u is 4x squared plus 3. So when x is 1, we get 4 times 1 plus 3, or 7. So that would be our upper bound. If we plug in uh, for x 0, we get 3. So that would be our lower bound. Now, we never have to worry about x's ever again. So that's the technique where you, you, you can change the boundaries to be used. These are used. And if they're used, you just get to stick them in. And so the answer is 1 8 e to the 7 minus 1 8 e to the 3rd. Do I care what that is? Not in the least. Leave it like that. Stop right there. There you go. That's your answer. You could take the derivative of that. Well, no, we have boundaries. You could have taken the derivative of that with the x's plugged in, and you should get what you see. Okay. One nice thing about boundaries is you can kind of deal with the x's beforehand. And so if you change the boundaries to be used, then you don't have to worry about those x's anymore. 